if I tell you, is a political transformation occurred in May. I was quite staunch nationalist when I started political activism from my student age. And I started viewing and my world view was shaped by the conflict dimension, the propaganda, the communal politics that surrounded that area at that time. As soon as I moved beyond the Kashmir, reached to the Karachi, which was cosmopolitan society, the city, and I began to tilt towards progressive, secular, socialist ideas, and I got in that kind of political activism that broadened my political perspective and understanding. But the, when I immigrated to Canada, and I had totally different, I mean, perception about Canadian values, democracy, as we used to study being a student and political activist, and we always believed that the Western democracy is ultimately promotes and protects capitalism and the imperialism and the product and the byproduct of that. But when the militancy and other, uh, I mean, started in Kashmir, people start losing their lives, property, and everything. Then and after, I mean, uh, I was I was a bit confused how to. I mean, decide which way to go, and as 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 it, there was quite I mean jubilation among the people that okay no we are going to win this war, but we disagreed, we opposed, we said no this is not our war, it's not going to enhance or empower our people politically, economically, socially, or culturally. It is a disempowering approach in the society and as a result of that after i mean uh, two decades of that militancy in kashmir the even the pakistan the most staunch supporter of kashmir militancy had to agree that no there were i mean loss of lives for no reasons and that then I started realizing that no, violence is not the answer of any problem, whether it is territorial, whether it is ethnic, whether it is cultural, whether it is linguistic, you have to resolve issues amicably, peacefully, and you have to promote, I mean, plural, transparent I mean, uh, politics and the culture in those societies. So that, that was the reason I had to move from that politics from one extreme nationalist politics to one other extreme the socialist and communist to find the middle way and the peaceful way to resolve the issue. And as a result of that, I decided to I mean, form this platform so that I could advocate I mean, this kind of political approach among our people, among our community, and encourage them to be part of the broader, I mean, culture, nonviolent approach. So that that took me there, and uh, I have just uh, written a couple pages, and I'll try to finish as quickly. I know you've been waiting here for quite long. Ladies and gentlemen, the discourse of the today has been arranged to examine the challenges and opportunities South Asian region represents in the uh, regional and the global perspective. South Asia is a mosaic of a a different beliefs, cultures, ethnicities, people with shared history. The region of uh, over one and a half million population has a great human and economic potential for investment, trade, culture for the rest of the world. South Asia region has had a long history of peaceful coexistence, but foreign invaders and colonial rule has a direct 
impacts on its culture, politics, society, where it altered communal relationship and communal and ethnic tensions were intensified. Colonial division has a further exacerbated and deepened these conflicts that remain unaddressed and unresolved after decades. South Asian problems are not unique, but embedded in colonial legacy and were further deepened by the failure of the state to involve people in nation and state building. Some states successfully pursued the path of, path of democracy while others derailed this process and fight over power resulted in dictatorship and political instability. The process of nation building requires true representation and participation on all level of decision making and of all its constituents and the people. However, failing to involve the people in political process and decision making caused genuine and the serious socio-economic and political grievances in some countries, particularly particular in South Asian region, but in general across the world. Therefore, we witness that the some states turn to dictatorship and encourage the religious and non-democratic forces to dominate the political landscape, those share entire democratic agenda with them. The extremism and terrorism is not coincidence but product of a politics and policies any state has uh, pursued over the years and denied fundamental rights, freedoms, and ownership on their resources. Political autonomy, economic empowerment,